How's it going guys and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be checking out how we can get the Dancing Dragon Mask in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. The Dancing Dragon Mask is, if not the best, one of the best items you can get in Sekiro. And what it does is it allows us to trade our skill points we have remaining for attack power. Because the other way to raise attack power in Sekiro is when you kill the main bosses, you get their remnant, which you can spend at the idols to raise your attack power a little bit. But the problem with that is there's a limited amount of bosses per playthrough you can kill, so your attack cap is pretty limited. And that's where the Dancing Dragon Mask comes into play. With this, if you have any spare leftover skill points, or you simply would rather focus your skill points you get for gaining experience by killing enemies, you can trade them in for attack power instead. Now, it's still very early days, and I haven't had time to test out exactly what the attack cap limit is. I'm not sure how many times we can actually upgrade it before it will no longer allow us to upgrade attack any further. I'm guessing there's some sort of a limit on it. Also, we don't yet know exactly how much skill points it raises per attack power each time. What we do know is that the first boost in attack power will cost us five skill points and it will potentially go up from there each time. So now we know what it does and we potentially want this item, how do we go about getting it? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So all we need to do is buy all three of the pieces of the mask and join them together to form the full mask. Now it's a little bit easier said than done. Each piece of the mask is going to be sold by a different vendor. The first piece of the mask we can buy from the vendor down here at the Hidata estate. If you swim across the water to the right, we'll find this NPC chilling in the pot and we can talk to him and he will sell us stuff in exchange for the treasure carp scales and this is going to cost us seven treasure carp scales to buy the first piece of the mask by the way a quick side note the way to get treasure carp scales you can either get them by killing the colorful fish that are swimming around the waters this becomes a lot easier once you gain the ability to swim underwater later on in the game and you can also find some as just random items around the world usually they're going to be located underwater on bottom of lakes and rivers and stuff the second piece of the mask we can buy from the merchant down at the abandoned dungeon entrance at ashina castle it is going to set us back 5,000 coins, which is pretty expensive, but it's probably one of the most important things you can spend that amount of coins on in this game. So we can buy this at any point of the game, even when later on Ash in the Castle becomes a little more unavailable. Let's just say you can always go back to the abandoned dungeon's entrance. So don't worry about leaving this until late game. You can literally do this right before the final boss if you wish to. Now before we move on to the third and final piece of the mask, it's going to be located in the Fountainhead Palace. So I will warn you, this is pretty much the final area of the game. So if you kind of worry about spoilers and you haven't seen it yet and you'd rather experience this area for the first time on your own playthrough, um, I'll give you a few seconds so you can click away now and don't spoil it for yourselves. Okay, that should be enough time. So if you're still here, either A, you've already done this place, or B, you're not too fussed about spoilers. So the quickest way to get there from any of the idols is going to be from the palace ground idols. And here we want to backtrack just a little bit until we open up the shortcut back to the previous area. You could also just do this from the previous area the first time you pass through. But if you've already unlocked this idol, it's quick to go from here. Then we want to take a right and cross over where the waterfall is. And here we'll notice there's a cave a little bit hidden on the top part of the map. Here we can jump off and quickly grapple jump to catch onto the ledge and continue through this cave. If we continue this way, just behind this building underneath the tree is going to be another one of these pot merchants. And he is going to sell us the third piece of the mask for a whopping 12 carp scales. So that's a little bit more expensive than the first one, but there's a lot of water in this area where you can find quite a few of these. So that should not be a problem. So now that you have all three, they'll automatically join together and form the Dancing Dragon Mask. You don't need to equip it, it's not a visual thing, you can't see it equipped in any way. The only difference it'll make is that now when you sit at the idols, you'll notice you have an extra option on the menu called Enchant Attack Power, but this time with skill points in parenthesis, meaning you spend the skill points instead of the boss remnants to upgrade your attack power. So I know what you're thinking, this is very late game, why would you want to increase your attack power now when all of the bosses are pretty much already dead? Well, there's New Game Plus. I have not yet started my playthrough of New Game Plus, so I can't say for sure what carries over and what doesn't, but even if the mask itself doesn't carry on over to New Game Plus, I would guess that the attack power we got by spending the points on the previous playthrough would. So this could be a very nice way to be very powerful before going into your next playthrough. Um, so I hope you did find this video helpful, guys. If you did, don't forget that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.